Hey there, and welcome to another one of Magus's many Minecraft tutorials. And today I'm going to show you how to set up your very own custom mod pack with a server that you can share with your friends and have all the fun that you want to your own customization. First off, we're going to need a couple downloads, so all links will be in the description. Do check for that. First one is Minecraft Forge. This is needed for any mod to run. You're going to go find the Minecraft Forge for your server, in this case 1.710, because that's what's available latest right now. So there's two, always going to be two options, latest or recommended. I, I would recommend recommended unless a mod calls for latest. Okay, next one is not enough mods. This is a great place to get all the mods you ever need, and they're all in legitimate places. Don't trust any other mod download site other than this or Minecraft form. The next thing you're going to need is make sure you have Java 7 and not Java 8, as for some odd reason, Java 8 is incompatible with Forge right now, and that is in the works of being worked on, of being fixed, but isn't fixed yet. So to get this, click Accept License Agreement, and then get 64-bit Windows down here. And if you have, if you need to get the 86, you shouldn't, because that's for two gigabytes or less. And if that's all you have, I highly recommend not running a server with a mod pack for you and your friends, or having a second computer to play the game on while the servers ran on this one. That might be an option. The f last and final download you're going to need is going to be Hamachi, or you could use port forwarding, but that's not what this video is going to be showing. It'll just simply show Hamachi as it is kind of the easier way, and if you ever get failed to launch engine when you turn it on, which does happen to a lot of people, all you need to do is uninstall Hamachi and reinstall it again, so be sure to hold on to the installer that you get once you click conditions of use and download on managed version and install. Okay, once you have all those files, first thing you want to do is set your Minecraft launcher open. You're going to need to do a little bit of editing here in the actual profile. By default, if you've never installed Forge before, you should see your name in the profile. That needs to be changed, but for now, we won't be doing that. We're going to go to Edit Profile and make sure that the actual launcher is set to the game version you want to play your mod pack on, in this case, 1.710. Here we could say profile, I didn't do it there, but ignore that, and hit play. Once it gets to the actual main menu screen, hit quit. Then you're going to close your launcher again and go back and to your downloads and get the Forge download that you got. We're going to use this thing twice, all right? So the first time you use it, install the client, click OK. It'll say it's successfully done, and then load your launcher another time. Now you'll be able to switch off your profile to the Forge profile. And do note that your friends must be running the exact same Forge profile as you to play on your custom mod pack. I will also show you later in the tutorial how to make a zip that will be easy for your friends to install with a simple explanation. All right, so if your friends, this is where you see the version of Forge right here. So be sure to inform them. 12:24. It might be 12:30 now, depending on you know when you download it. It could be anything. All right, so now make sure you're on the Forge profile, and you could just hit play and then quit, and that'll install the mods folder. You're going to have to do that at some point, but you're also going to have to know what to do in Edit Profile here. A couple things are kind of important. If your friends already used, or if you've already used another Forge before, you may have to switch it off this use versions list to make sure you're at 1.710 with the actual version of Forge you just installed. Another thing you want to be wary of is your JVM arguments. There's two potential things you will ever need to switch here, and one is on the front of the line of all the thing, and one is right at the end that you don't see yet until you add it, and I'll show you that just now, and I'll leave it in the description. So XMX can be at least two or three or four, depending on your computer and how many mods you have, uh, but by default is one. You probably want to go to at least two if you can. Okay, now in the end, if you ever have more mods that equal about 100 megabytes or so, you will get a crash that says somewhere within the crash reports or the logs or the whatever, server council that you have ran out of max perm gen size and that is an issue. If this is the case, I'll leave this in the description and make sure you come and copy and paste this in here at the end. And I think I added two spaces. You only want one space in between. I actually managed to add three there. So yeah, you'll just add it straight to the end of what was already there. And you have two options for this guy. He's rather 128 or 256. The first time you experience the perm gen size crash, if you have too many mods, you set it to 128. If you get it again, then you probably added a bunch more mods since that point, and you set it to 256. Okay. At this point, make sure you hit save profile and play the game. This is going to generate your mods folder. It's going to basically at this point you can start installing mods, and if you're just playing on your own, you're going to be good after this next step. Now the next step is to go to your actual app data. So you could go to run and type in percent app data percent. But I'm going to show you a really cool way that not a people. Lot, a lot, not a lot of people know about, right? So I'm going to show you this. Once you're in your .minecraft, go up here on your folder menu and hit right-click and go to Add Current Locations. Add Current Locations, the favorites, rather.
together. And then here, it'll appear on the list. So now in the future, when you want to get there, you can just press Windows key and E at the same time, and boom, you're already right there. Pretty damn fast, all right? So add any mod that you want into your mods folder here. And don't forget that there are configs. Once you launch a game with mods, it'll generate configs. So if you get conflict IDs, you could probably fix them in here. Just know how to read your crashes. And that's in crash reports. And usually within the first couple lines, it'll even say what the mod is that's, uh, you know, that's going on. Maybe you missed a prerequisite mod. It could be any sort of thing. I'm not going to cover any crashes in this video, so let's continue on. All right, so now your actual mod pack is launched. Make sure you check the run, you know, make an actual game. Run a new world, make sure that's stable, and then you're ready for the server. Okay, so now that your client's all good, it's time to actually make the server. So let's go into a new folder here on your desktop. Ignore all these other de folders that I might have just tried to do on previous recordings. And go ahead and run your forge. Now, in this example, we're not going to go to the client. We're going to hit the server and then hit these three little dots here. And then go on your desktop wherever you created the new folder. In this case, it's new folder 7. And then click open. You don't have to select anything in the folder. Just hit open. And then hit OK. And that's going to add two new files. It's going to add... a uh, a new server jar and it's going to add uh, the libraries just like this okay so while this is finishing I'm going to show you the next step you're going to need this launch.bat and to create that you're going to have to first create a notepad file so you can press Windows key and R to open up your run and type in notepad you could also search in the Windows menu for this Okay, once you got the notepad, go to Alt and File. Uh, I just like doing it that way. Go to File, Save As, and then Save As Type needs to be switched to All Files. And then at this point, you can name it pretty much anything. We'll, call, we'll just name it Launch Server. And then make sure at the end you have dot .bat, just like that. And then save that up. Now, you could then close this, and then you should have the actual thing that looks like this here. It no longer looks like a notepad, it actually looks like little gears. You can then right click and edit that and it'll open it back in the notepad. Now, whether or not, see I saved the other one I just made here, just so you know. Obviously it doesn't come with anything written in it, but this is what you do need to have written in it. And two quick things, you're probably already somewhat familiar with this, but this is where you set the RAM. The second number can't be any bigger, any smaller than the first. It's like a minimum, maximum thing. Uh, you can change that to 1, 2G, 3G, whatever you like. And then if you do experience the max perm gen size error with big mod packs, this is where you could add that in to make sure the server runs according to the same amount of perm gen size you've ran on your client. Now this next step is important and a lot of people get confused at this bit, but in your launch.bat where it says dash jar and then server.jar or, or something.jar, that is actually the name of the jar in the folder and must be exactly the same when it comes to how it's spelled. So in this case, my actual server jar is the forge server uh, 1.710, you know, 1224, whatever, universal.jar that we just got from running the forge installer. That's our actual server jar. But the thing is, is it's not linked to the same name as in the launch. So we need to fix that. And we're going to fix that easily by renaming it and renaming it server dot jar. Now, and this is the part where some people still get confused. If by default, you don't see the dot jars at, and the dot bats and stuff at the name of these uh, on the files on the list. If you don't see that, that's because it's hidden. So if you go and rename the, if you rename it and you type in server.jar, you're actually naming it server.jar.jar. Now to avoid this problem, go press Alt on your keyboard, right, the left one. Go to Tools and Folder Options. Go into the View tab, and down here past these circles, you see Hide Extensions for Known File Types. De-check that, so that way you can see the actual thing here and as you can see that is needs to be spelled now properly so just server dot jar itself like so only once and that should then work so when you're all done editing this guy save him up or close and then hit save so I'll leave that in the description as well and then once you're ready you go ahead and put that into your server folder and then you're ready to launch it so let's give it a try See what happens. Of course, the first time it's actually pr might shut down because of the Ulia, Ulia or agreement thingy. Yeah, see, it did shut down. Here we are. All right, so this is it right now. Now, it will, like, don't forget to do this on your end, too. You just got to open up that EULA.txt and then name it to uh, true instead of false and then go ahead and launch another time. And now we should see, well, we already managed to get the mods folder in there because it was forged, but now they should actually work. So what you need to make sure is whatever mods that you have on your client now need to also be in the server. And if you change, if you make changes to the client, it must be changed to the server as well. Pretty common 
you know, general that that should be known. It should be obvious to you. But everything needs to be the same within the mods and the config folders. So that's pretty much it at this point. You could then use Hamachi, and that's the next step of the process. And that's not too bad. See, this is the Hamachi problem that you do get, and when that does happen from time to time, it usually happens because you closed it. So if you keep it open all the time, you won't experience this so much. But if you close it, then you at this point you have to reinstall. So do do that, and then when you have Hamachi open, right click your name and get the IPB4 address thing. Copy that. And there should be, if you right click it, there'll be an option to copy it. And then come here to your server.properties. And this is my actual server, but it should look pretty much the same at this point for you as well. And then make sure you paste in that IP there into the server.properties so it's working well for you. And also note that your firewall could also be blocking it as well if you can, if your friends aren't able to join. And if that's the case, come here and make sure you disable your firewall. Now, type in firewall and open the firewall with advanced security, right? And that's going to open up this. And what you're going to do is, and if you do it the other way, it actually won't work the right way. I've noticed this. If you go into normal firewall and disable it, it only disables two out of your three firewalls. So you have to actually come here and click Windows Firewall Properties. And on these three first tabs, you have to switch it from on to off for all domain, private, and public. Just on, off right here. I have other videos on my channel about very specific server issues. Go check out my, like, how to make a server playlist or just some of my older videos it's all there you got to be able to find it uh, take a look the next bit is actually making the mod pack that so you can give it to your friends right if you don't have WinRAR I highly recommend you get that it's RAR labs I could maybe leave that in there but honestly just Google search WinRAR get that installed and once you do you could create a brand new WinRAR zip archive you could also just right click go to new and do zip archive name it whatever you want so custom mod pack and now the only thing your friends really need is the Forge installer. You could throw that in there. They also need the stuff in your dot Minecraft. Not all of it, but they do need the mods folder. Okay. And don't forget, they also need the config folder. And it's especially important if you had to change configs for conflict IDs when making your mod pack. So do in include the config folder. And then once you've got that, those three things are all you really need. Now keep in mind some client-side mods aren't needed on the server and vice versa. Some server mods might not be needed on the client. So keep that in mind when you're downloading. Make sure you know what the mod is. Make sure you take a look at the actual mod description page. Now the final step of getting these mod packs to your friends is transferring it to them. I wouldn't recommend uploading it like this to TechIt or any of those things because really you did not ask for permissions, unless you did, and that's a different story. But if you're just playing with your friends, you are allowed to do this. And you can go to Dropbox.com. That works great for me. Sign up there and upload your mod pack there, or just transfer it to them on Skype and wait a little bit longer. Totally up to you, but that's what I like to do. And if you want to take a look at my mod pack, which is set up the exact same way, you can go to my Dropbox, which I might leave a link in the description. So take a look for that too. Now, how does your friend? How do your friends install this? Well, they pretty much install it the same way you install it, but it's little bit easier on their part. First they have to run Minecraft Launcher and run it as 1.710 or whatever version and then quit and then they have to install Forge and then run it and then quit and then once they have Forge installed they go to the .minecraft and if they have any mods and configs they rather delete them or back them up. Okay, And then once that's done they could open up your zip and just drag in your entire mods and config folder. And that's why I've also included Forge in there so they could do the whole process that you did and you just help them through since you learned it here today. So that's gonna be everything for now. If there's more issues, which I'm sure you could run into more issues, I, I could have made this video 50 minutes long to explain everything, but I just wanted to keep it shorter so you guys get the point. If you need more help, I'm gonna soon be making a forums where you guys could come and post any information or help or, or problems or questions that you may have about these sort of things so we could all kind of conjugate together and talk about it and I can link to other videos and you can see people who's already you know all that sort of good thing so that's going to be it for today guys thanks again for watching one of Magus's many Minecraft tutorials don't forget to like and subscribe and even share the video to help out other people make their own custom mod packs and take a look at the channel I have two other channels now in the making I have a gaming channel called the Lazy Sandbox and I'm going to have another channel called Impulse Gaming and it's going to be a good time so we'll see you next time and have a great day peace